their 45,000 capacity dates at Earl's Court, Noel Gallagher, songwriter for the official biggest band in Britain, popped down to my radio show last week to talk about his favourite records and play a couple of acoustic numbers from the new album, What's the Story, Morning Glory. And although I couldn't quite persuade him to do me a special jingle, we did manage to get the beat cameras down there to record the event. It's Gary Crowley on GLR, out after dark, and I'm very pleased to say, fashionably late, but he's arrived, <coughs> our special guest this evening, Noel Gallagher from Oasis. I didn't think you were going to come. Really, I was in the shower. Really? Yeah. So you're very clean. Well, I thought one of us better be clean. Because <laughs> you're <all> stinking. <laughs> so what have you looked up to this week? Are you rehearsing? I've uh, been rehearsing today and was, was, at, um, was at Pop of the Tops yesterday with Madonna. But, uh, Did you get to me? No, we, see, everyone they had to they had to throw everyone out of the building while she'd done it a bit. But what, well, including you, lot? Yeah, don't know, they know yeah. who you are? No, exactly. I don't know. It was like uh, we don't we don't want to don't ask her for an autograph. Or we just want to see if she's fit. In the yeah, flesh, you know. But uh, they're like, no can do, boys. You've got to leave. So what, have you actually been rehearsing this week as well? Or? Yeah, we uh, we started rehearsing Monday, Tuesday, and I've had a gig Tuesday. We had a gig in Brussels on Tuesday. And then, uh, what was all that about um, Liam walking off the um, stage or something in one of the papers, one of the tabloids today? Did you see that? Yeah. I mean, what happened there? He does it all the time, though. He does it, uh, it's part of the show. Yeah. That's his. Uh, well, it, it's, uh, it's on the set list, you see. It just moves on. It goes like supersonic, acquiesce, Liam walk off stage, <laughs> scowling. And then he re enters and does his, does his bit again. Yeah, that'd be quite funny. But um, no, he's, he's, uh, he's having trouble with his voice at the moment. I don't know what it is, but he's. You see, like that was telling me, like, you can't stay up till six o'clock in the morning, shouting at the top of your voice, fighting, and except, you know, I, I hope to go and sing again. And then expect yeah. to sound like yeah. a nightingale of song. It doesn't work like that. No, it doesn't. I mean, I could do it because I'm a professional, but you can't. You know. Has it actually been quite stressful the last few months? Oh, then? Yeah, it's been too much. It's like, you know, I mean, all, all this sort of started with, with um, sort of when, uh, when we got Alan in the band, that was a new drummer, and then. Our uh, sound engineer, who we've had since the very, very first gig we've ever done, Mark Coyle, who co-produced the first album, he was diagnosed clinically deaf. So he's had to give up doing doing the sound, so we had to get a new sound, we've got a new drummer. Is that down to you, lot, or whether that was yeah, something that was coming? Uh, yeah, because, I mean, I mean, it's what you've seen us live, you know like, how loud we were, and it was like, he just wouldn't turn it down. and uh, So he, um, it, kept, it kept getting louder and louder at gigs, and so someone tapped him on the shoulder and said, are you all right? And he went, what? You know, so he... he, he he lost his ears, and then, then Gweezy got, got taken, Ella, and then, then we had to cancel all the gigs, and then we got a standing bass player in, and then he quit, <laughs> and then it was like it was going. Oh. When I was told, it was like on the bus, and for about the first minute, we all sort of went. Phew. And then I just broke into a fit of hysterics. I couldn't believe it. Everyone's going, "What are you laughing at?" And I was going, "You know, I mean, how mad is this group? It's like." You know, you know, can we ever do anything just like low key? Can't we just like turn up and do gigs and then for everyone it to be goes, easy. yeah, for it to be easy? And then everyone just started laughing. I went, you know, everyone's going, well, we'll have to get a new bass player. And everyone's all laughing, saying, there's so many people who have applied, there's bound to be CID there out somewhere to stick a plant in the group, man. You know what I mean? And they're all getting nicked, you know. So he's going. So when we got back, luckily enough, we, uh, we phoned up Griggs and said, um, are you up for it or what? And he went, oh, yeah, and I suppose so, man. <laughs> so, uh, we said that's good because we were going to sack you if he said no. <laughs> what was the first record that you ever bought, no? But what? Uh, going right back to the beginning. The first record I ever had bought for me was um, The Show Must Go On by Leo Sayer because I, he was dressed as a clown. I must have found that amusing when I was a kid. But the first one I bought myself was Nevermind the Bollocks. I see, I've been cool all along. So was punk, the was punk the kind of first thing that really yeah. sort of like connected well, with you? Well, I used, to, I used to hang around with all these older guys who, was, who used to live around now in Burnage and um, they used to... You see these guys with like exclamation marks sprayed into the back of their heads, and I thought, easy, that was a bit odd, that. And they're all into this band, the Sex Pistols. But I was like too young, so I mean, the first band I was in really was the Jam. Um, and then after that was the Smiths, and then the Stone Roses, and then and then us. Let's just talk about the recording of um, Come Together. You know, what yeah. was that like for you? A, a couple of days later, Paolo was doing some uh, video stuff, like on footage and that. And it wasn't until a couple of days later where I was just like watching it and there's, there's, there's this bit where I'm putting down my guitar bit and uh, McCartney's just leant on top of the mixing desk and he's staring at me. And I, there's this big, massive bead of sweat, right? It's a foam, it's right under my ear. 
and it gathers a bit of paste around the eyebrows because they're a bit bushy and that, you know. And then by the time it gets to the end of my nose, it's like it's a, it's like it's a massive great big drop. And uh, I was just looking at how terrified I was. I was just at him like, and then he says, "Was that a variation on G Manny you were playing?" I was like, "I don't know, sir." <laughs> what about you know these accusations of uh, you know plagiarism? Oh, no, I mean you've had your fair um, few levelled at you. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't see what the problem is. I mean, it's like, music, music's a God-given thing and it doesn't belong to anyone. And I think whatever influences you can take from, from whatever groups, I think it's, I think it's right. Because, I mean, the, I mean, I've said it before loads of times. I mean, it's like, there is only sort of like 30-odd chords on a guitar and it's all been done before. So you're going to be ripping somebody off. It's just a case of whether they catch him or not. Yeah. <laughs> Today was gonna be the day, but they'll never throw it back to you. By now, you should have somehow realized what you got to do. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. And all the roads we have to walk are winding. And all the lies that lead the way are blinding. There are many songs that I would like to sing for you But I don't know how, I don't know how But you know maybe You're gonna be the one that saves me I'm going to play Donald Buck in anger. Tell us about this song. Well... One of the lines is, is a John Lennon quote, isn't it? Uh, yeah, he said the brains I had went to my head. I got this, I don't know if I should say this on it. But anyway, I will do, because I don't care. Um, we got, we got... I was in America and somebody gave me this tape, and it's, um, it was a tape of John Lennon talking into a tape recorder about... He was going to start writing his memoirs, apparently. And um, it was just this cassette of him speaking into a... a well, in, in the tape recorder, and he was, he was giving a lot of people a lot of slagging, actually. And um, he says, um, as well his lines was, uh, I think I'd better sit down now, because the brains I had went to my head, and I thought, I'm not in that. And I've probably just cost myself about 500 grand there, but never mind. Got a bob or two nowadays. <laughs> Throw it about a bit, you know what I mean? Got to spend it on summer, eh? <laughs> All right, then take it away. Take me to the place where you go Where nobody knows If it's not a day Please don't put your life in the hands Of a rock and roll band Throw it all away So I start a revolution from my bed Cause you said the brains I had went to my head Step outside, summer times in bloom Stand out beside the fireplace Take that look from off your face Cause you ain't ever gonna burn my heart out So Show slides away But don't look back in anger I heard him say In it, mate So Sally can wait Cos she knows it's too late As I'm walking on by My soul slides away But don't look back in anger don't look back in anger I heard you say At least not today